but probably introduces a whole bunch of spittle in it too. No one cares. It works. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! All right, you right there, Claire. Yes. Your tumby all right? Yeah. I'm sorry. What? What's this fucking thing that you just decided to share here? Uh, okay. Tori is this uh, doodling a comic involving his new character in meeting Stormy. And they're just having a cat fight. Uh, okay, so they're both chasing after the idea is they're both chasing after like a purse snatcher because Stormy's out out and about and just doing her thing. Lol. And he's like, "Oh, hey, I'm new at this. Wow, that's that one I've seen on TV before." And she's like, "Hey, dipshit, look oh. where you're running!" And then he trips into her. God damn it! He was my criminal to catch. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> look at these two fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I want to noogie both of them. Mm -hmm. Chris, right. I'm good to play. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just having a little giggle. All right. I need to get back into this mindset because it's been a while and i got to break this. So. Thanks, Daisy, for the two. <laughs> Thanks. Just wanted to make sure I was remembering the code right. So. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Before you suddenly post the whole raw chat. Ow! And Laura, like, across the thief at their feet, and it's, just, it's like, boom, look for this. Bada bing, bada boom. Hmm. The British Museum steals the Tower of Pisa. <sighs> Part of it is that I haven't really focused on this world enough to keep it in my head fresh. Mm. You can find it, Safi. It's in okay, there. You just gotta reach. And my stomach decides to have problems, even though I haven't eaten anything. No tummy. I know what's wrong. Gastrointestinal track of late. All right. <clears throat> Focus the mind. Okay, who wants to roll now? Because you're gonna get a six at this rate. Let me try. Put our hands together. Aww. Five. <laughs> no, it's closer. it's close. It's diminishing returns. Claire, get it. Claire, get, get it. it. Claire. Wait. Okay. Gotta do it. Roll d6. Oh, right. Fine. I'm doing it. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so now Safi rolls will get three and we've gotten all of them but one. Fine. I also forgot to, to include. There we go. Damn Circle, it. Circling it around again. I forgot to turn on some, some modules that I really like having, including dice tray and 3D dice. Dice so nice. 3D dice are nice. <clears throat> Start beating up. Ow, got you. Yeah, right on time. Right on time. Get him. Right as I was going to beat her up. Shark right, you, jumps you know, in for okay. the assist. One second. <laughs> I, I didn't realize the cage door was open. <laughs> Just see, she okay, left the there fucking you go. cage door open. Shark bait well, was, on was, the prowl. I was, I was like giving her a little roll. I was rolling her around like a little sausage. And, yeah, but she decided to like ninja slump out of her cage, ninja over to my foot, and then ninja bite me. Uh, the British as long as she's happy. <clears throat> I love the, the, the fucking mentality they have of like, no, you don't get it. The host countries, they can take care of it. And then they spit on the we artwork. Can. Whoops, we lost it in a fire. You never hear about fires in those countries. Well, no the British policy is everywhere. that anything in the uh, British Museum is owned by the British Museum. We can't just give it back. Meanwhile, the Dutch are like, hey, listen, we feel really bad about it. You want it back? Come and get it. We'll even give you the last little gift box for your troubles. They should give him gift boxes for their trouble. At least a symbolic yeah, gift. It's it's the it's the very least I could do. <laughs> it's gonna be a fruit basket. <laughs> oh, the guy shows up and he's like, "I'm allergic." No. The bullets shoot sweat. <sighs> okay. The only way you have to apologize is another gift basket. <laughs> no, 
It's just this vicious cycle of people being allergic. It's a recursive gift basket. <laughs> Actually, if you take the if you if you if you break the handle open, <laughs> there's candy inside. <laughs> like a fucking piñata, just in case. I'm allergic to sugar. <laughs> All right. <sighs> now I'm feeling a little bit more chitty, at least. <sighs> I don't know why, but I've been as I've been preparing this, I've constantly been like, I've let this sleep out of my working memory. I don't know if what I said even matches up anymore. That's my constant concern. But I do follow... <laughs> anyway, you're up in yonder hills. You come from a town called Ashfire, inside of a um, nice, decent valley, in betwixt several larger cities. One of those sleepy places where you visit and stay on your way to others. It's a nice life, a calm life. There are definitely wild animals, and occasionally some ragamuffins who make a little bit of trouble. Actually, I'm not worried the ragamuffin might mean something that I don't know what it means, but I've read it in the D&D book. It's like magical clothes that possess you. And it sounds Wait, like ragamuffin? A, and it sounds like a fun word for bandits. It's yeah. usually like a person who's in ragged, dirty clothes. Well, Typically that does, a child. That does sum up people that are bothering I, you on the streets. I am a ragamuffin. Thanks, Claire. <laughs> <clears throat> Sharkbait is also a ragamuffin. How dare you? Are you pouting? No. Sharkbait okay. can pout? It's your fault you don't give Sharkbait <clears throat> any nice clothes. Alright. The point is that you live in a lovely, sleepy little town, and normally not too much happens. The seasons go by, the holidays pass, and by the end. It sure was another day's living. The visitors are nice, always adding a little bit of spice. But this year, your visitor was an envoy between two large cities. I'll pull up the... Specifically between a coastal town known as Harrington and a distant producer of wheat of golden rose. As the envoy visited, they were, like a lot of city-like people, a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit above you, shall we say. The kind of person who's like, I can't believe I have to go this far. Oof. But they were still cordial and polite and they paid their dues as they stayed. And then they vanished. You woke up one morning, they didn't show up for breakfast, and found their room empty. Their personages having vanished into the night. The worry now exists oh. that they have fallen victim to the local banditry, or worse. And of course, an envoy like this mis going missing is very bad for your reputation. As a result, the militia has organized a small group of people to go take a look. Considering that it was mm. obviously not some sort of animal attack, given that the inn is mostly intact, it is assumed that whoever took them has likely been looking for shelter. You are sent off to Old Fort, which is a ruined structure that stands up in the mountains nearby. It's not too far from town, and you're probably familiar with going there. If all you're in youth, then perhaps later in life to see the view from there, as it's quite an elevation up. First you traverse the forests, the lowlands where the trees grow thinner as they just can't stand on the unstable hillside, and eventually crawling up the moss and shrubbery-covered cliffside. Old Fort had a long staircase built up to its top, but years have eroded it, causing it to be rather smooth and a little slippery. What? As you crawl up the mountains, and the view in the distance grows further and further, you can even see ash fire right from here. Soon also, the ruins loom in the distance. A small pinstreak of smoke and comes from one of the ruined structures. The area around here is quite rugged. You imagine that if you were to try to survive here, it would be best to bring rations instead of trying to hunt or forage for food. There aren't many bushes, and what's around looks to be mostly the unpleasant sour stuff that you don't really want to eat too much of, if you can help it. Yeah, you don't want to put these in your mouth. Yeah, I, I probably could have told you that. I mean, endurance is the skill for allowing yourself to consume stuff you should not. <laughs> Maybe that, that's the guys. So... You stand a short distance away on the stairs that lead up to the old fort. Its collapsed walls greet you, and what remains does provide some decent shelter. Even from here, you can tell that some tarps have been hung up to create covered areas. 
This place is often hit with rain because, well, this is where a, a rain shadow forms on the other side. So, clouds compress and cry here. You do not hear voices or any particular human activity. So it's up to you what you're going to do. Well, I should probably try to get in. I mean, there's probably not a lot of human activity anywhere, honestly. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we 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 could go in and check on the the smoke. We should probably take it carefully. But first, the question is: Who exactly are we all dealing with? Who is at the head of this group? I imagine it's probably the biggest and the strongest of you. And who could that be? But dear little rat boy. <laughs> nah, it's probably probably Dizzy's character. Dear, dear yeah. little rat. Or perhaps the I mean, was, the ranger of the group could also. Yeah, I was gonna say I was probably the one up front just because my character's like good at getting around these exact areas. Yeah, you'd probably be leading the way. What do your what do your ranger eyes see, right, right? No, I'm asking what exactly do people see when they look at Xylus character who does not have a name from what I can tell. I have not figured out a name because I'm really bad at this. Well, I haven't figured out oh. a lot too, so that's fair. Oh my uh, god. What? Because of Cove. What? Cove. That's the name. For a coyote? It's a place. Yeah. It's a, it's a geological formation. You like those. You're, you like rocks. Like. <laughs> <laughs> sure, whatever. Fuck it. I'll take it. <laughs> so a coyote. What does the coyote carry? What do they wear? So the coyote is mostly wearing like leathery gear, kind of cobbled together. It definitely looks like he's been, he probably either made it himself or got the stuff to make it. And whoever put it together wasn't the most masterful tailor in the world. Uh, most people in the village don't really know him all that well because he tends to stay out of town, you know, being a ranger and all that. But when they do see him, he uh, is known for being a little bit on the uh, uncouth side. Not very good with social cues, because well, there's not a lot of people he runs into. Uh, kind of, you know, the usual coyote, like goldenish fur, pretty dark, though. Uh, definitely, like, shaggier hair, because we're in a fur universe, so he has hair. Fuck it. I mean, if you go uh, out into bright the eyes, lot, though. Go into the yeah, he's... lot, you end up with a lot of muddy tips. Yep, you see this guy, he's like, oh yeah, that guy's probably not been in town in like five months. You know that, that picture of Claire like eating the sandwich slowly? Like that's that's how they look mm -hmm. at you when you meet him, right? Yeah, he's just like, can he keep eating though? <laughs> Giving you a look. <laughs> just like, oh. Up next, I imagine yeah. it is Harriet, who is tall and imposing. She's got muscle. Harriet, Harriet what, do, is, what do people see when they see you? Harriet is large. She's broad. She's very... She moves around a lot. She's very active and... I don't know how to describe it very well. She's like... She doesn't sit still a lot, despite being, you know, very tall and very big. Like, you'd expect her to move a little bit slower, but she's just, like, very kind of bubbly and all over the place. She's a cat. Yeah. She's got black and white fur with red hair. Yeah. Wearing probably, like, leather armor that's not quite big enough for her because it belonged <laughs> to one of her siblings. <laughs> 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 Hiding behind a bush or something as we approach the scene. Uh, in town, she's like she works at the local inn, yes. which her family owns, and it's like part of a very big family of like twelve other or well, twelve kids, including her. And she mostly just went around, you know, work working. So it's there. possible you met. It's possible we met those guys, but since there's so many people working there, you might not have. Yeah, she's she's not really in the customer service aspect. 
well, just, you know, cleaning things and fixing stuff. Hauling the giant bowl of soup. Yeah. Picking up any unruly customers and throwing them out the door. That kind of thing. Yeah. Very friendly, though. I'm bad at explaining things. Oh, good. We get the idea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Next up in line is almost certainly going to be Eliana. Yeah, it's me. What do you look like? What's uh, your deal? Well, I, I'm I'm a golden retriever. You know, golden fur. You know, hair. You know, kind of short, see. but you know, it's it's like a short bob cut. It's like you know, you know. Really straight, you know. You know, just below the... Well, I would say below the ears, but, like, that's on a human. But, like, you know. You know what I mean. Uh, she's in, like, you know, new leather armor. Because, you know, this, this is, like... Like, her first time, like, going out on adventure. Because, uh, you know, she's wanted to go out on adventure. Because, like, it, it'd be neat. But every time, like, the opportunity rises, it's like, oh no, we got we got to face like, you know, this this thing that's you know ravaging through the uh you know the farms, and it's like that sounds dangerous. But she promised herself she'd go on the next one, so this is the next one, and uh, she she's known a while around you know you know the people who you know give birth because she's aided a couple of them, and she's aided you know other doctors who's assisted them and uh that that's kind of why she's part of this party because you know she she likes helping people yeah okay and and, and she's she she has a, a mace that she's double fisting she she's not going to use it but she it's it's, <laughs> it's like an intimidation thing she's holding it's it like, very tightly yeah it, it's another like well, I, I got this thing <laughs> all right <laughs> All right, last in line is is a is a is a little ferret. Is a little ferret and is not, you know, secretly an outsider demon like shark bait. God damn it. <laughs> uh you meet Fritters, or you know of Fritters. Fritters is definitely more than likely with the party because they probably cause a prob problem and, and need some away time or have been sent away for a little bit. Fritters is very like is a very dark, dark colored ferret, like kind of black with brown paw marks, or not marks. Um, lots of browns. That I'll just say that stripes, like no, no stripes, patches. Yeah, yeah, patches. Spots. There you go, patches. Yeah, they're they're mottled. And uh, aside from seeing their silly silly gear that they seem to always have it with them, they're wearing some traveling gear that, that doesn't look like it fits them at all. Like they borrowed it. Nick. And they're, they are always smiling. Oh, that's pleasant. <laughs> smiling with ferret mischief and uh. She's literally a clown. Yeah. <laughs> um, they got green eyes because I have a fixation on green eyes. I won't. Met, I won't. I won't explain it. <laughs> Why? Why do you bring it up then? They look like grapes. <laughs> they look like. <laughs> Your eyes are so the eyes. Like blue... <laughs> They're like blueberries. All right. I, I apply some medicinal pet pets to Claire. There you go. <laughs> Don't worry mm -hmm. about it, dear. All right. So this group of four is marching their way up the rocky carved staircase. And they see the structure looming in the distance. It's not that far. It's like a, it's like a few dozen meters, a few hundred feet. I mean, if we're using iron claw, I should, <coughs> should say paces. Hate the acid. Why is it so rowdy? 
did not eat a shark bait. <laughs> As mentioned, there's smoke coming from the structure. A thin wisp crawling upwards. The smell of meat will hit the nostrils of anyone who happens to have the sense of smell under their species listing. Ooh. <laughs> Which, uh... I think it's everyone but Harriet. <clears throat> Harriet can't smell. No smell. Gosh. Encore. Our senses Under. Just listen. One has a constant ear. Well, no. you know that there's someone here. And it's possible that they may have seen the envoy. Or are the ones holding them captive in the first place. Either or, you also recall that the old fort has a... They have a, a, a basement of sorts carved into the mountainside. Partially to get the stone they needed to build the place in the first place. And partially because who doesn't like a good basement? And if you, no, I do like basements. And if any one of you are the particular type to be like additionally adventurous and go into a basement like that, even though with... I mean, if you can do magic, the light's not, the, not a huge problem. But for the most part, you might know that this place goes down into strange caverns where weird things live. Weird things? Oh. That does not seem like a place we want to go. At least not if we can avoid it. Yeah, so well, it's also not probably where we need to be. Yeah, Ho hopefully it's just them in a campfire. And we'll just be like, hey, we thought you were missing. And they'd be like, no, we weren't missing. We just decided to uh, leave yeah. early, you know, for our adventure. <laughs> go camping. So, yeah. See some of the yeah. local sites. Well, let's go and try to get closer and keep our eyes open so that we don't you know, get too close. Yep. You lead the way, buddy. That is my job. Marching up. The staircase makes way for a sort of plateau, mostly overgrown with rugged grasses and mosses of the like, and lichen. Everyone always forgets about lichen. Lichen is lichen are cool, man. Lichen is great. Isopods are are online. <laughs> Isopods are online. They'll eat that stuff. Yeah, they love they love that stuff. They'd be like, "Yo, pass the detritus. Yo, pass me pass me the cream soda. I'm gonna have me a snack." <clears throat> I like isopods. <clears throat> man. Once you get a little closer, and uh, the few remaining structures, the tall tower stands overhead. Most of the wooden beams have rotted away into chunks. And over the years, the many people that have visited this place have caused most of the fallen stones to get put into heaps. Soon enough, you see, well, you, you, you kind of walk past where the gate used to be, like there's this semi-overhang, you go under it, you stand in this small open area. And then off inside of the largest tower, some tarps have been hung up all over the place to create a sort of a, a, a campground. A few tents have been set up under it as well. In one area, there's a little campfire, and over it sits a spit roast of meat. Some sort of small oh. game, it looks like. There doesn't appear to be any attendant for it, but the fire is low enough that it probably won't burn too bad. Hmm. Hmm. Delicious. Ah, uh, to quote my favorite book, I'm going to string my bow. <laughs> now my bow should already be strung by now. I was going to have it at the ready and try to creep close and look about. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to keep a sneefa out. Let's get something. Sneeps. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm always sniffing. Zala, your unnamed character. And with cove. your knowledge of I took it because Claire said it. You're with your knowledge... What? what Claire, Claire said cove, so I took it. Well then, cove. Um, yes. There, because of your extensive knowledge regarding camping, you can tell that by judging by the amount of tents and the amount of space that has been reserved and utilized, it is fairly likely that you're dealing with about 12 people. It's a lot more people I want to deal with.
How many people were uh, we looking for? You're looking for like a dude. Ah, uh, okay. So definitely more people than uh. Clearly. Like the roads aren't exactly safe, but you can usually hijack with other caravans or hire yourself some sort of protection. That makes sense. I'm I'm sorry, my someone just sent me some messages and I my brain goes, What? What was the message? I'm I'm trying no, I'm trying to process this. Okay. Da, 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 da. It'll be easy for the da, da, da. <clears throat> All right. So what are you doing again? Well, I'm trying to just see if I can identify where the people are before we go in too far. Let's see. Taking a good look around the place and figuring that out is going to be a bit tougher than normal. So how about you give me some of that mind searching? What does everyone else do while uh, good old Cove is taking a look? Uh, can I assist? All right. If you have good observational skills, you can definitely assist. Okay, well, my stats are pretty good in this. <laughs> Which, for the most part, just means that Zyla gets a bonus D8 on the roll. I'm good at digging <laughs> for the situation. Actually, you get a bonus D12, because I got a team player. Well, I'm replacing one of those D uh, D8s with a D12. Oh? So it's a six, a nine, and two twos. Six, a nine, and two twos. Well, that's more than enough. Taking a look around the place. I mean, you're dealing mostly with moss and all that kind of stuff, so the clues are a bit difficult to come by. Um, it appears that there is a lot of recent wear and tear, because the moss and lichen around here grow pretty quickly, near the entrance. More than really should be if there's just incidental traffic. People have gone down into the bowels of this place in sufficient numbers as to cause disturbance of the local growths. Oh, there's not many people up here. Then we can identi We can try to get past all of them. Freders, what are you doing while this is happening? You're not going through these people's possessions, are you? I, I I'm I'm definitely thinking about it, but maybe it's but maybe it's best for me just to keep a keep a nose out. I mean, I was told to. Oh uh, man, what did they say? Don't come back. I mean, no, wait. They said, <laughs> be on your best behavior and actually help the village. Don't keep a sniff out. Don't sniff around. I think, I think worth remembering about uh, Iron Claw as a as a conceptual setting and just like in general, this is not this it, this this is not going to work on D and D rules. You can't just commit wanton murder and and theft without some people raising some eyebrows. Although you are in the well, wilderness, get... this is the place where I mean, bandits I... operate. Well, I mean, if I ate the, if if I ate the meat on the stick that is in free, is in free range because no one's claimed it yet, clearly I'd get in trouble anyway, probably. <laughs> what the fuck? I had double checked. I had to roll to uh see if I gave you the bonus. The... Yeah. <sighs> what do you say, Bella? Uh, to assist, I had to roll. No, 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 no. Side. So the, the way an assist works is you make eff effectively the same roll, but you can take rote on that roll for the most part, or quite often you can take rote, which means you, if you have two dice, you auto pass in most instances. Uh, At which point you give her a bonus DA to do it. Uh, or D12 with a team player. It's just that, it, 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 you know, it's, it's useful for a variety of situations where you want some more successes or you want some more guarantee. Depends on the circumstances. But with the two of you snooping around the place, you get your information. Um, although, because of your little assistance, what's her name again? Gosh, Goldie. Oh no, Aliana. Aliana. Got a new name. Aliana, having a little snoop around the place, also finds out that there are some areas where th 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 this thing becomes a sheer cliff face after a bit. Like, if you fall off this place, mm -hmm. you're going to fall a long way down. But at certain points, there are more shallow passageways. It looks like someone has been using those quite frequently to go up and down. 
There's a lot of scuff marks, a lot of war and moss and lichen. Oh. So, wait, instead of been going up and down the cliff instead of the trail? Uh, they go or... down the cliff, yes. Oh, okay. Whoever's here, we, or whoever's not here, we gotta keep an eye on the cliff. You know, since you're out there, can you give me some mind observation? Me? Yeah. Yep. 2d8. Hi. D8. Da, 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 da. 2d8. Now look at those, look at those isopods. Fish emotions. <clears throat> I got a seven and a five. Nice. In that case, as you take a look out over the nearby uh, valley and everything, as I mentioned, near the forest, there. Uh, the forest ends at some point because of the hills picking up. You can see a few humanoid figures off in the distance. Two of them, in fact. Well, I definitely tell people who I'm with, just like the, the, the people, people down at the cliff. Uh, not sure friendly or not friendly, so... I'm, I'm I'm just gonna hide. Oh wait, no, they're far away. I don't have to hide yet. Yeah, they're, they're so far away that they probably wouldn't think too much of you. Especially yeah, if they're the normally 12 people here. Yeah. I'm gonna lean over to you and be like, anyone who is this deep in the forest is probably not friendly. We're, I'm friendly. We're, we're deep in this forest. I'm friendly. Fritter draws a knife on Harriet. You can't trust anyone out in the forest, including me. <laughs> Cove actually pauses at your. Uh, Cove does, in fact, pause at your logic, thinking about it. Sure. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> okay, well, if those guys are down there, that means that they're not here. That's good. We want them not here. We can investigate more without them here. So if everybody's inside, we should check the tents. Maybe we'll find information we need. Can anybody read? Because I can't read. Is that a, a, that's a skill? That a that's a gift. Oh, that's a skill. A gift yeah, or a specific language at that. Nope. Actually, wait. Can I read? Let me check. You're a clown, Claire. So maybe uh, I can I can pretend to read. <laughs> she can look at a I'm book and literate. pretend. Like unless it's you know written <laughs> like Calabrese. Oh. oh, I can't read. No. Yeah, it's actually not a common thing in this game to be able to read. <laughs> yeah, I don't think any of us can. What? Great. Well, well, let's go look around. If we find papers, we can get those back to town. I like that. I like read. that. D and D is like barbarians are the ones who can't read, and I'm like, listen. That implies that you have a schooling system of some sort that it's abnormal. Yeah, because like in days of that the fantasy would take place in like sixteen hundreds, literacy was what five percent of the population. Actually, let me look at the classes and I'll tell you exactly. Like I know clerics and wizards, they gotta read because clerics gotta read their fancy holy books, and wizards are wizards. And wizards are like they went to college. Druids <laughs> probably not because druids tend to function on oral tradition. Paladins probably. Monks at least, probably at least some reading. Bards maybe. Like you don't actually even... no. Most bards would be uh, oral. Back in those days, uh, bards traditionally taught each other songs through practice, not through writing down. And and rogues would be whatever, really. Rogues would probably be good at like thieves canting, but not really normal writing, unless they're you know specifically forgers. I mean, I'm talking about like ledgers and stuff. Like if they're in that particular area, then. And then there's fighters, which wouldn't be literate. Rangers could probably read maps. I mean, reading maps is a whole different thing. Yeah, that's why I listed it separately. Thanks. Pat, pat. 
barbarians are apparently stupid because Vikings are traditionally dumb. Despite having higher literature than England at the time. Because most of the history, the history was written by the English. Yeah, the English are kind of fucking terrified of those guys. <laughs> They were so mean to me. I was just trying to have lunch. Yeah, so I think we should go in. If we find any interesting looking paperwork, we can take it and get someone else to read it. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. But maybe we could find like a map or something that shows where they're going or where they've been. So let's sneak in and make sure we don't get caught. Yeah. I'm gonna sneak down Stealth. into Sneak it down into the to the bowels of the earth. Oh, we're going through their tents and stuff first. Through their tents. Oh, I don't know how much sneaking you gotta do. You don't see anyone. I know, but you gotta be careful. All right. So the lot of you just start tossing and turning everyone's possessions. In effect. Sifting through them, yes. I want to know, by the way, like the, the motherfucker who designed the Google Sheets interface, why the section for tabs is so small when there's so much blank freaking space next to it? I know. I keep wondering now. There's like... A couple inches of white right here. It's like, what are you using this for? Ugh. It's like they wanted to put a feature there, but they just forgot about it. Sounds like Google. Taking a look through their possessions. I love my rolling arms. You find mostly personal effects, things that someone might carry with them on the road, like some snacks, some foodstuffs, spare bits of uh, cloth and coats. Unless you intend to take something specific, is there anything you're looking for in particular that you hope to find among all this? Oh, possibly maps or documentation that we could have someone else read later. Possibly just see what we're getting into. Ah. It appears that there are only two people who participate in the noble art of writing. But you take a look at it, it's like, yep, can't read that. Those are uh, words. Yeah. They are, belong to the the people that have the, the biggest, fanciest looking tents, as in the most new one with the least amount of holes and problems associated with it. Those two tents have, uh, well, they also have a few more bags in it than the rest. And in them you do find some objects which contain scribbling on them, sheets of paper, and something which indeed resembles a map that, by the best you can tell, appears to point to this place particularly. Does it have a trail going back? Because I could probably read maps. Probably. Like, I probably can't read the text, but, like, you know, I can gauge where we are on a map. Let's see. I like how you don't have geography, which is, I think, the skill that's technically used for this. Um, <clears throat> well, were you asking a trail going back? What do you mean with that? Well, I've seen if there's any other indications of places that they, place they've been on the map, like a, like a log. It yeah, like... Sometimes people it pass doesn't appear like lines. this map was used for that kind of navigation. It's just like a little circle around this place in particular. Well, I'm assuming there's a scroll tube or something. I'm going to store this stuff up and toss it to the, uh, the pacifist. Yeah. Or at least likely to get blood on it. Yeah, be also probably less likely to be, you know, directly in fights. <laughs> and get thrown into a river. And they have to fight a black dragon. Which isn't properly scaled for the system because for some fucking reason, 5th edition's like, no, this is fine. And then the ex the uh, Black Dragon's just like somebody's ex because we're in a furry world, so that probably happened. They <laughs> flutter their eyelashes at you. Hey, want to get back at my ex for me? Gosh, the idea of like being a dragon's trophy wife, like you're fucking tiny ass, so you get drawn up to the, to the other guy. Starting a horde and there's just like 16 women there. It's like, we're trophy wives. <laughs> It's like, no, we're just the D&D... We're just the card game group. Stop calling us... The... <laughs> it's the eSports team. God damn it! My truest treasure, gamers. <laughs> <laughs> My fantasy football league. <laughs> it's not fantasy if they're there. It was regular football. <laughs> well, no, that they're... Other people that, you know, they bet with. Outside of, outside of the obvious map you find, you find a few sheets of paper, which are sort of lumped together with some twine. This could be a thing people like to call a journal. 
No, a journal. Yes, a journal. Lame. <clears throat> Finding books is expensive. I mean, you might not know what, ri what writing looks like, but you know what a journal looks like. They always start with like the little header with some numbers. Mm. You know, like star dates. I think people are too much of a coward when they're like, no, but star dates aren't really like, no, that doesn't fit a fancy. Like, I'm like, why not? Why can't you have a calendar? It's, like, we literally have two calendars. One is based on the Earth spinning around the place, and the other is based on the moon doing funny business. What's well, wrong I can understand that? having like star dates because it'd be a relative amount of time that you've been traveling since a certain time that you left. And more importantly, more importantly, the stars have been used for navigation for years, and technically speaking, the stars are also associated with the, with the, 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 the solar cycle, like the year. So... Technically, the Gregorian calendar is a star date, and you're all just fucking cowards. You fancy writers, come on, put up those fists. Point is, you find some writings, but you can't do anything with it because none of you could freaking read. So a bunch of and what, bunch of what do you expect? So you're just stealing some mm. some person's personal belongings in hopes that maybe it could take something useful later. Yeah, hopefully. Um. Among all these possessions, among all these possessions, you do also find that they have like a beaten up book, like a proper book book bound and everything. <clears throat> a book book. A book about books. I mean, it's filled with well, all kinds of fancy diagrams read. and stuff. Both these all aren't important. I, I mean, like important for for us, yeah. But like, I hope these aren't like. Things like a, a list of things they need. Just a shopping list. <laughs> no, I, I get my shopping list bound in leather too. <laughs> but now we can start looking around inside, see what they're doing here, because it's kind of weird that they're up here. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Looks like they came here with a goal in mind. Yeah, if it's on the map, that's definitely something. On the map. So what do you do, kids? Well, we're starting to head in. Yeah. Into the spooky hole in the ground? Cool. Slip and slide. What the hell? Oh, whoops. My grip is firmer on my mace. <laughs> All right. Well, Shake the hole in the world. ground, unfortunately, is a hole in the ground, which means that you will eventually run out of sunlight to navigate by, and this thing goes down a bit. This is where it seems like everyone else went, right? A lot of footprints, well, a lot of markings of movement go in here, more than should be given, <clears throat> you know, the average amount of people to visit this place. I can see in the dark pretty well, but I'm gonna, still going to light a lantern so we can see where we're going. Besides, there's the distinct smell of smoke coming down from this place. Yeah, I probably have good eyesight too, because I'm you know, nocturnal. Uh, well, you have a light source. I'm, good light. I imagined you brought some with you, be it a torch or a lantern or something. Yeah, yeah Dizzer's got a lantern. You strike your lantern. And begin your descent. No, you break it that way. <laughs> you lick the lantern and remind it that you care a lot for it. Spicy. As you descend past the car passage, it eventually splits in twain. The smell of smoke comes from your right. In addition, you hear a very quiet mumbling, like a little chit chat's happening around the corner. I'm going to try to, yeah, pull up a hand and, like, indicate for Dizzy to stay back. And I try to slip up closer and listen. All quiet-like. Because I have keen hearing. Remember to be careful with your uh, little uh, light sources. Because it will yeah, betray your location. You slick a little, little further into the... Like, by the way, when I say tight, I mean, like, this is, like, a person-wide. Like, Harriet is having a... Not so great time navigating the space. It's not great. The room does I, open I up. Squeeze on in. And you you sneak up and look around the corner, as you are hidden completely in darkness. 
There is no chance they can see you. In addition, the sound of the crackling fire and their conversation muffles your ex presence as well. If your GM makes you roll in these situations, you can go tell him to go fuck himself. I mean, I get it's it. I get, I get the idea of like, okay, you bump into a rock or you kick a little stone or something like that, but why would you do that when it's not an actual tense, exciting situation? Is my point. Yeah, this is a very easy time for me to slip around. You can take a road on this, is the point. The point is that you sit around the corner and peek. You see about three people sitting around a fire. All of them are wearing these distinctive yellow coats. Uh, they got hoods and everything. And they look to be made out of a fairly unusual material. They seem to be having a, a very whispered but pleasant conversation. Specifically about, well, all kinds of things. Up over the fire is a pot within which appears to be a nice stew bubbling away. Made out of all kinds of roots, vegetables, and miscellany. Miscellany. Okay, now I'm hungry. So do you, uh, how long do you intend to sit around for this conversation? Just going to follow their latest train of thought, or... Uh... I was going to see what their latest train is, see what they're exactly talking about. Excellent. Sniff their words. Would you like to roll me a d6 of luck? Three or higher, and, uh... Maybe you'll get something you want. No. <laughs> I don't think I will. <laughs> They're mostly having a good conversation about how uh, plain the soup has turned out. Or stew, or whatever it is. They're not chefs. They probably wouldn't know. And they're the only... Uh, this is the only passageway through, right? Uh, you could also go to your left. The the thing forked into two directions. Besides, hey, what's everyone else doing with this? You just kind of quietly waiting there, buddies? Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm like, well, I, <laughs> I, I'm saying if like there are footprints going the other direction, too. Because I assume there are, but... Oh, in here, there's really not enough growth or anything to tell where anyone's going. Uh -huh. The room they're in, by the way, has two exits. Once you snoop around a bit, you can tell that there's one going... One going south, and one going west. I'm mimicking the ranger. I want to be as sne sneaky as they are. I don't think that's how that works. So what's the move, kids? Well, we can go have a look at the other direction real quick. See what uh, see what our options are. Probably an idea. Either that, or we could jump down there and try and interrogate the people. You think that meat was theirs? I have no idea. I mean, I what do you guys want to do? I'm going to... I I mean I we 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 could be neighborly and ask if they've seen you know any, anyone like the, the the person we're looking for. And we we don't have to assume they're hostile. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if we're gonna go in there I got a plan. What's the yeah. plan? Okay, we put the fire out. And then they can't see. Neither can you. And then, two of us can see pretty well in the dark. Um, answer what would just like echo at them. Answer me these questions three. Oh no no no! I got a I got a plan. You see, this is the, that's phase one. All lighting and no lighting. But there's a I have a plan here. So we put their fire out, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. We wait a moment, and then we sh uh we jump down. We shine the lantern at them to dazzle them. Fuck their night vision up. Okay, here's the question. How do you know where the fuck to point that thing? We know roughly where they are. Also, I want to point out that your night vision is completely useless in total darkness. Like, you need some... It enhances, but it can't enhance something that's not there. Yeah, that's what Dizzy said. But my point is that we'd be the ones expecting the sudden light. Fair enough. They wouldn't but... be. We could get in position with that. Hey, quick quick, quick question. How, yeah. how, how do we... Extinguish the fire? Yeah, how do we turn off the fire? Oh, I got that. Uh, okay. What do you get, like, the dousing arrows from Thief? Like, what? The... What? No, that's stupid. <laughs> it's not stupid in this setting, actually. <laughs> uh, by our claw systems, there are probably ways to do that. I mean, there's no, literally I'll a spell just... called Create Water. I will just... Okay, here's what I'll do. You see, you see the fire. Mm -hmm. I will just... 
take the air around that fire and make it not be there anymore. Okay. Fire go. I went for elementalist. See. Elementalist I mean, air. <laughs> no, I mean you're not restricted in any way in that. Like the basics. Oh wait, I can choose. I can use any of them. The basics of elementalism are like you can do everything a little bit. Which I think so, includes like snuffing out mm -hmm. candles and stuff. Yeah, because I chose. I thought I had to choose one of them. No, no, I don't know where you got that from. Like nothing implies that. <laughs> I didn't. I don't know how the magic works in this game. I mean, you have to choose as you go along, but that's because you have to pick specific gifts. Uh, let me yeah, see so I just can use all the uh, apprentice levels then. Uh, well, everything that's yeah, everything that's under the apprentice level, which is create the elements and move them around. Create and move. Technically speaking, I think destroy is part of it too, but they got rid of that for some reason. Which I find funny because like cr destroy air was hilarious. It makes a loud <laughs> noise. <laughs> uh, here we go. Minor elemental effect. It's a stunt though. It'll leave you kind of reeling because you're doing some fancy whoopsits. Your, your knowledge of petty elemental magic allows you to perform minor little feats of wizardry to manipulate the physical world. You can call forth a misty fog, spark, a candle, or a gun. Lift a quarter of stone, which I think is like a, a kilogram or so, or less of unattended physical materials and move them around in near range. Freeze or boil one liter of liquid. I'm surprised they're using liters, considering they're also using paces. Or any other petty feat of magic. Your host gets to say what does and doesn't count. Basically, it's a little cantrip. Yeah, and I was just... Because I can also use the uh, apprentice levels. I was just going to, you know, turn off the fire with magic. I just realized I need to check something in my my, my, in my stay plan or my schedule. I mean, you could totally make that little fire go away. I mean, it's actually a bit more than just a candle, so it would require a roll, but I don't think it's going to be anything too hard. Let's see. Oh, no. I thought I had another appointment today, but apparently I don't. Puts me in a weird spot because I kind of told someone I'd be busy. Oops. Wow, I'm an idiot. So you get to be busy. <laughs> you get to be I, dizzy. God damn. Wow, that's me. Why do I have acid? I haven't eaten anything. And normally I get well, acid I mean, from milk products and dairy. Well, I mean, your, your tummy can make acid from you not eating, too. Thanks, Claire. I get stomach acid a lot. I have acid reflux disease. Oh, God, this is, like, very bad. Ooh. You might want to get some crackers, Sassy. I want my oh, dino knife. <laughs> Or a, a nice slice of bread. Or a nice dino nuggy. Dino nuggy is good too. Or a nice chomp out of Claire's butt. <laughs> a nuggy in my CD tray and hope it gets to it. <laughs> this is how a fax machine works, right? Yeah. Apparently, the reason it's called a fax machine is because it's a facsimile, because it's a copy of it. Ha! Huh, that is neat. That that's your that's that's your neat deep with your boy Safi Crook coming right at you. Hooray. <laughs> neat deep. God, I hate it. All right. Neat deep. Oh, damn it, Dizzy. Okay. Well, it's entirely possible for you to to make the fire go away. I mean, the, the easiest way is to move it. To so take the fire, move it up, and there's no fuel. It goes away. I can't. Don't know why they I got rid of that. Then. Actually, probably got rid of destroy because of how the magic system works and like making destroy elements. Mm, there's a lot going on here, and I feel they didn't do it right. All right, so what's everyone else going to do with this, with this plan of, like, extinguishing the flames? I think uh, you're supposed to be the one jumping in and being the... And the clown. Int ...intimidator. What's that? You, you, you want to do clown things? You're going to join in with uh, being scary because you're a clown. I want to know what your best-case scenario looks like. We get in there. We get them off guard. They're dazzled. They're not ready to fight. And we can intimidate... We can interrogate them without them having a chance to get away or fight back. I mean, they're probably still going to fight back. I mean, we get the full, uh, you know, advantage, though. You have the element of surprise on your side, yes? You get the first turn and everything. Dun, 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 dun. God damn it, Claire, what are you up to? Being clown. <clears throat> okay, so best case scenario is you intimidate them. You make you make him feel uncomfortable. All right. Get All our right. info. All right. Let's start off with Xyla. Manipula me. Manipulating fire is a uh, will presence, if I recall correctly. <coughs> Let's see. 
On the other end, if you really want to try a little air movement, you could also go for that. Which would, I th think that's speed? Weather sense. Which I'm better at that, because I think, yeah, I got a point in weather sense. Good. So that's... You could even make it your favorite sense. use. Wait, what's that? Uh, your skills, every skill you have a mark in, you get to say it favorite use for. Which means that if you roll a one, you get to re-roll a one, if you want to. But only one one. Not, like, multiple. Yeah, I'll just do that check. Okay. Okay, so D, 1D6, and 1D8. I turned on dice tray. You can just click the bottom section. Oh, good thing I did that. Goodness me. <laughs> well, we roll the 1D8, then. You're going to need a success to make this work. Yep. You hurl yourself into the room. The cold and clammy elements, however. Humidity in the air and the fact that you're uh, kind of making a big whoopla about it. Um, Suffice to say, you kind of botch it. It's not a proper botch, like, like an actual all-ones botch, but more like you try to move it, but the air just swooshes the flames. You stand in the doorway, <clears throat> and the room is not that large. Like, all seven of you would kind of awkwardly fit in here if you had to, but it wouldn't be great. <clears throat> but a lot of them stand up from their, their positions. Um, if you would like to escalate this to a proper brawl, you're free to. Otherwise, they're just going to point their weapons at you and demand some answers. Oh, that one well. What Someone does everyone else do when, uh, it... when Cove jumps out? And apparently the situation... Uh, the thing is... The fire didn't go out. I, I just kind of like jump out behind a cove with my arms up, not holding my mace. It's like, hey, uh, we're looking for someone, and we thought maybe you knew where they were. Uh, In case you were wondering, the uh, person that you're looking for is called Arct Arcturus. Arcturus. Okay. He's a star. He's a blue jay. Of course he's blue. And we're looking for Octurus. I start, uh, I, by the way, since you said the clown can be scary, didn't hear the last part. I'm juggling. <laughs> <clears throat> Unfortunately, as you pose your questions, questions are posed back. Oh, what the hell? Doing little, little funny flashes, are we? Oh gosh, Google changed the fucking layout. <laughs> what is this for? Hmm? They raise a question to you. Uh, oh. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I'd like to know exactly what you're doing here. Eh? Oh, God damn it, fuck that. No. I'd like to know what you're doing here. <laughs> Sneaking around dark holes. Bothering people just uh, trying to make a little stew. What kind of stew? Oh wait, no, uh, not Stu. Uh, we're we're here because uh, someone went missing, and we you know tried to follow where they went, and we think they went around here, and maybe you know where they are. I'm Aliana. <laughs> <laughs> You're worse at this than I am. <laughs> Suffice to say. The fact that she's half uh, pissing her riches is uh, not really getting much out okay. of them other than a good chuckle. <clears throat> let me, let me, let me take oh, t take this over. I am juggling. <laughs> is that? Yeah. It, is that your whole move? <laughs> well, is that all you're saying? You never know what you'll find in the dark. Why wouldn't we be sneaking around? Can I roll me some speed We're presents? As you are apparently juggling for these people, who are already speed laughing. Presence. Yes, speed yep. and presence. If All right, have... so okay, it's speed is a D10 and presence is where is presence? It's a skill. You have an eight, D8. Oh, actually, I have D8, D6. So you have D10, D8, D6. Wait, how do you have a D10 in one of your eye? Uh... Eric. Increase, she's a fairy, she has increased uh, trait. Oh, okay, okay, so I, 
So one one d ten, one d six, and one d eight. You said. Yes. Because your career also applies. Wait, what do you mean I can't roll those? What? Claire can roll what she Claire well feels like. Yay! It wasn't four. TX six. Hey. Huzzah. So are all about a pretty good roll considering the system. Given that four is usually the number you're aiming for. Um, <laughs> well, you you manage to to captivate them, as they they can't stop laughing at the fact that some some little lady just jumped out, made a fool of herself by by haphazardly asking questions, and then some fucking clown shows up. Uh, this really you, is a clown show. In between tonight. their laughter, they seem to wonder if like the circus has decided to show up around here for some reason. <laughs> so wait, Dizzy's gonna be the big tough person. I'm going to be the archer, and we're giving a circus. You've made... No. <laughs> oh my god, we're not... We're, we're back in Extinction god Curse. God damn it. <laughs> anyway, what, what the, the situation has gone a really awkward direction, all things considered. <laughs> but dang, am I good at this. <laughs> uh, dang, is she good at this. Harriet's also laughing. You can hear the, the, you can hear the pa -pa 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 music going on. But she, but she, but Fred is still, you know, like, like, like you, you said, I, I'm posing the question of, you know, that we we're looking for this fella, and uh, defusing the awkward in the dark situation with my, my juggling. I mean, sure, I could, I'm probably juggling like some nice rocks. I could probably start chucking these and probably hurt someone. But I mean, that's not the point. Don't worry about that. There... Look at, look at, look at the funny clown. They're too, they're too busy having a laugh to really listen to a clown about any. Particulars. They'll come to in a moment. <laughs> so, what do you tell them again? That you're looking for. Uh, Akita uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Akatosh. You know that they might not even know his name, right? Okay, Cooper we're looking for guy. a. Yeah, we're looking for a blue, like a like a blue, little, little blue jay, an out an, an out of towner kind of fella. Claire, you, you your ferret isn't like putting like her hands in her sides, making like wing motions, right? Well, no, that's because I'm I'm juggling. I can't do the wing motions yet. The fact that you considered oh, insensitive, insensitive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm being very. <laughs> it's kind of like, mean, it's kind of like a chicken. I mean, actually, are... that's probably racist in this world. In a sense, it is. Mostly for chickens, though. I think you can. Yeah, I think Book of Jade has chickens in it, as like a choosable option. Yeah, I think chickens are the rice. Do not hypnotize chickens. <laughs> it's a cry. <laughs> oh, that is such an intimidating gift. Jesus Christ. What are you looking at? <laughs> what the fuck? It's so intense. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Like, I'm usually one not threatened by clowns, but this clown, he can just, he not can only just not out clown me, he can also outrun me. <laughs> anyway. He can F. After, after, after a good minute of getting their, their jollies off of the fact that you guys are apparently here to put on a frickin' show, I would like to know what Harrietta's doing. I mean, mostly laughing at the whole situation of juggling to defuse the situation. It's a daring move. <laughs> so you're sticking behind for now? Uh, mostly just kind of looming over everyone else. <laughs> Chuckling to myself. Well, this this room is like two meters tall, so it's actually about good for you. Yeah. You're like uncomfortably close to the ceiling, though. <laughs> I mean, I imagine you're used to it since, you know, building tall houses is a bit of a tall order. Yeah, it's not really... Things aren't built for people that tall. They never are. All right. As you've had a lovely little... little, little, little I do love that Giant is a gift you can just take game. It's like, yeah, you can just have a growth spurt if you really want to. Yeah, it's tempted. No, I'm just tall. I'm just tall. <laughs> anyway, a lot of them tell you that they might have seen and they might have not. The question is, what's it to you? Um, I'm letting you guys do the talking. I'm not good at this part. Oh. Uh, um. Well, it, like, they're uh, a, a noble, I think, and you know, we we, we kind of don't want 
nobles go missing after going to our town because it's kind of like a you know we don't we don't want to send nobles to your town because people went missing in your town. So wait, who sends we, nobles? Please, I thought nobles were they wanted to. I think. I mean, he exactly acted like, like a noble. He was talking all big words, and he had books with him. No, this is just like breaking Cove's mind that people can send nobles places. Well, I think now, Saffir said delegate, but uh, envoy. Yeah, envoy. but Cove doesn't know this. But Cove doesn't if, get this. If shit. you've ever played Dwarf Fortress, you know that sending nobles is a critical part of their occupation, especially the rooms with levers. Yeah, <laughs> I have not played Dwarf Fortress. Well, I can make you a noble. You can see that one of those are lever rooms that we're talking about. Just gotta pull it. Okay, so normally people I use this as a magma room, but I decided after that last goblin raid to just stuff it full of goblin corpses to see if that does anything. Mm. Imagine getting crushed by 100 corpses falling about 200 meters. I mean, it was pretty funny the first time. But is it funny <laughs> the second time? When the child... Hey, man! Hey, man! Hey, man! What are going to the goblin... <laughs> Mr. Ma M Mr. Mr. T Tavern leader, the the kill the kids are playing in the Adam Smasher again. Pull the lever. <laughs> Hit the lever. God damn. Hit the lever. Okay. Additional pylons. So the funny part is there is in fact a exact YouTube video that's just the clip. Nice. <laughs> if you ever need it, you want it? It's yours, friend. All right, the lot of them, the lot of them, <laughs> still find you guys very cute with your very unassuming I'm tomfoolery. Very See, the <sighs> goal's working. Fr Fritters gives a thumbs up. Mission complete. You see uh, Cove's hand tapping on his thigh a little bit more, getting, getting more and more impatient. Anyway, the answer they'll give you is that, you know, you, you don't, don't worry about it. They got a gut feeling that he'll be home safe soon enough. Okay. So uh, do know where he is. Hey, how's your soup? Well, it's probably a little, little chilly now that you blew all that air over it. I mean, the, that would actually not cool all the liquid. The fire's still going. I know. But Can that's their hold complaint. Them, hold them upside down. Stew. Yeah, but uh, how's it taste? I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay cooking. I could try a spice stuff for you guys before we head out. <sighs> Hell yeah! I, I, I appreciate your, your, your gusto. I don't know, I don't know why they would share their soup with you though. Oh, don't worry. I was, I was expecting them to say no. They are saying no. Unless you happen to have the ability to convince them of otherwise, they really have no reason to just share their soup with someone. I have you the ability to move boiling it. soup onto their faces. You might spit in their soup. I mean, I so can make far, the soup spit on them. I mean, so far you've just made the wind blow a little bit. They're yeah, I not can't feel every time. Besides, we know these are kind of who we're looking for now. We gotta do something, right? Mm -hmm. You want me to throw rocks at them? Uh, I'm going to use move water. <laughs> You're gonna stew them? Yeah. If if the soup is like boiling, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> I mean, that's a it's a hell of a move. I gotta go to the bathroom again. I listen. I've been drinking all night. I've been dehydrated in my sleep every over the last week or so. I don't know what the hell it is. No time to get some. I've been uh, feeling that myself. Time to get some electrolytes. It's what plants crave. <laughs> I'm not a plant, Claire. Yeah, but if plants crave it, you would might crave it too. Claire, goats crave the mineral, but I'm not a goat. I do not crave when, the mineral. When have plants ever been wrong? <clears throat> Fair enough. If it's on the ground, it's good for me. I'm going to go like a plant. Be in the back in a moment. A nice raw tomateo. I regret to inform everyone that tomateos are apparently poisonous unless cooked. Yum. I don't know what that is. Yum. It's like a small green tomato. It's apparently really good, but from what I understand, it's like poisonous unless you cook it. You cook it. It's like aren't in tomatoes nightshades. Yeah, well, Exile, you you know what I'm talking about, right? 
Tomatillo? Yeah, Tomatillo. Those are poisonous salty cooking. Because remember, they're they're Mexican, Claire. And yes, yeah, they are from the Nightshade family. Yes, yeah, so you, you, you need to cook them so you don't get your, your tummy explodes. Some, you know, something like that. Also, they're not related to tomatoes at all. What? Probably just look adjacent to the models. It's it's kind of like how lime's called lemon. Technically, that's because the people I know in Mexico. Uh, Skittles refuse to believe me that those are the same thing. That they're separate, that limes and lemons are different. But yeah, uh, tomatillo is actually uh, from Nahuatl, not from uh, Spanish. It's a tomati. Places it in my mouth. Yeah, probably don't. Isabel! Isabel! <laughs> Like, technically, you don't really have to fully cook them because, like, they're in salsa verde, Claire. Yeah. Oh, mm. right. Hmm. <laughs> it's like, hmm. <laughs> no, they they have like husks on them. The husk will be pretty poisonous. Oh, okay. Definitely oh, like, wash. Look at this cute VTuber bun I found. This clown bunny. Oh, they are cute. Yeah, like the fruit part of a ripe tomatillo, Claire, is completely, completely fine. Oh, okay. Also, Just gotta Alex, get the husk off and then clean it. For a second, I thought the stand on the back of that little like, Suntique thingy was their feet. Yeah, same. It was like a weird frog feet. I was like, that's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Also, I like Isabel's face in that like chocolate eating picture. She's just like, I'm just done, Mr. Mayor. I'm resigned. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I know done. What I'm doing. Oh, nice. <laughs> she just scarfs it. Well, she's also a dog, so you told her not to eat it, and well He's got it now. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> also, all important gift time. <laughs> Go shot. Yes. <laughs> this this gift always gets me. <laughs> Movie of all time. A it's movie most, of all time. Yeah, it's the most movie of all time. I don't know because Velocipaster is pretty up there. Yeah, especially with that like, <sighs> e- like, effect. Yeah, FX of uh, get yeah, this, this fucking moment. What? What is this? Velocipaster. <laughs> the guy's parents get car bombed, and they they just put VFX. <laughs> By the way, I'm assuming if I fail any clownery, something like akin to this, like literally everyone, even my own party, just starts chucking things at me. <laughs> Velocity Pastor had some of my favorite moments in movies. By the way, Zali, if you just definitely filled in your personality gift. Personality gift? Yes. One of your key gifts is your personality, which is um, basically a bonus D12 in a situation where you feel like it. Oh, okay. Just making mention of it. All right, so you're trying to throw boiling water on this guy. Uh, <laughs> the clown's still juggling. Good old uh, Eliana is doing her best, and Harriet is uh, still just having a laugh, I imagine. Yeah, it's funny. The situation, however, is about to funny. escalate. Water manipulation is is mime swimming. It's swimming. Yeah. Earth is you gotta move. Fire is present. Okay. The command over over the elements. Well, then I get a D8. Marvelous. Hey, if you roll high, that's all you need. Four. That's all you need. Gosh, I, I absolutely, absolutely hate it when people are like, they, they made the roll and it's like, oh, it's not a 10. I must have failed. And they start whining about it. And then the GM is like, you needed, you needed a five, man. You just needed a five, man. I think everyone's right. so used to need like super huge ones. It also it also gets me, and this has more to do with the GM than with anything else. Is when the GM goes, "I'm just rolling to see how bad it is," and it's like, "Cool, miscommunication." Thank you. Um, let's see. Well, I don't think normally move water is weak because it's you're just hitting people with a bunch of water. 
but I think you're hitting this man with scalding water. Soup. Which I think would leave some serious burns if done correctly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, probably in the face. I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking about this. Um, sure, we'll go with three damage for this. As you sploosh him. Let's make it four. Because it makes sense that this could probably result in someone dying from third degree burns. Ouch. Very ouch. As you hurl the scalding water at him, the steam going through the air, the smell of random assorted vegetables filling your nostrils, the person closest to it, who's also closest to all of you, lets out a, a horrifying scream of agony as every single nerve under his fur, on his... Animals have really pale skin, by the way. Under his pale skin are set alight by the intensity of heat transfer between the two. Now, with humans, you can kind of scrape this stuff off. The fur means that he's going to end up with that awkward, clammy, cold feeling afterwards, even if he takes off all his clothes. So, effectively, his face burns and then rapidly begins to cool again. It is extremely unpleasant. And the other two pretty much go from their laughing, chuckle-fucky nature to taking out their weapons. And they will charge. Go for this. What does everyone else do? I just want to know if you're in or out on this. Oh, uh, uh. The, soo the laughter stops. It's <laughs> oh, I I'm... just want to like get in front of Cove as they start charging. No, 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 no. We we gotta roll. We gotta roll. Your initiative rolls in this game are, are are goofy. They're not quite what they should be. Um, I'm gonna look at the combat chapter because I don't actually know this. Actually, I have this table somewhere. I know that much. <laughs> on your sheets, no less, because I'm smart. Right, I put British it here. Still oh, there we go. Despite the uh, at the bottom the of your, at the bottom of your battle tab are the initiative numbers. All right. So, um, whoever of you were really not expecting Cove to go this direction, you're you're. You're basically rolling against difficulty 6, which means you need 7s and up to respond properly. If you were kind of expecting it, then it's difficulty 3, and 4s and ups are what you need. Your initiative roll is always comprised of your is comprised of your mind and speed, and if you have something like danger sense, you add a d12. So, uh... <laughs> initiative. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm definitely... Rolling against a six here. I'm not. <laughs> <clears throat> One moment. Wow, a lot of sevens. <laughs> okay, so here's what happens. If you got all ones, you start the fight just clumsily grasping at yourself, dazed at the audacity. If you failed, aka none of your dice beat the target number, you're fine. If you tied, you can take a ready action, which means taking out a weapon or ornament that you didn't already have readied, or a magical spell, but you are sent reeling by it. If you succeeded, at least one of your dice beat the number, you may take an action to ready something, or reload, or take a stride to move into the situation. If you got two successes can or I more, you also start with focus. Um, to register focus on your character sheet, which I recommend doing, go to status effect, add effect, and just click focused. <coughs> you can spend... <coughs> Focus has a variety of effects. For the most part, it lets you... Uh, I if you get hit and you are sent reeling, focus pff, makes it go away. You can use focus to act out of turn. It's basically you're your ready. You can you, you have your reactions. Are, your reactions are tied to it. But if you want to ready an action, you... It's, it's, you can take an action out of turn. Let's put it like that. Even right now, as combat has just started. The game specifically points out that if a bunch of people were very good in their initiative, expect the first turn to not start until everyone's had their fun. Right. Which is also how, how ambushes tend to work out, is that they have to roll really well, and they probably won't, and you have to roll really low because you're you know, set up for the situation. All right, so what's everyone uh, looking like? I got one success. I, I sent a gift. Of my, I got a one and six. Well, one success is really all you need. Yeah, I got a four and a five, so, unfortunately. Uh, Iron Claw uses turn-based combat. What that means is that whatever side logically goes first goes first, and if there's really no obvious winner, then it's the players, because 
Well, you know, fucking sucks when the party gets owned on the first turn, doesn't it? <laughs> Haven't even had a go. Um, moreover, you're obviously in the one starting the shit. <laughs> and you were more ready to for a fight than they were since they started chuckle-fucking it up. So, who of you goes first? Because side by side, there is really no rule for who goes first in a given party. On a given side. So technically, your good friend Cove can immediately just go for another round. I mean, I'd probably end up going first just because I'd be the one, you know, initiating everything. All right. All righty, Cove. Let's see. Would you, would you, would you like to go for them? Yeah, I'm going to use my bow. Like, I'm going to, you know, the hand I use to cast magic is going to go back. I'm going to grab an arrow and I'm going to try to shoot the guy, the nearest guy in the leg. So I would like to point out one thing about like how magic works, like what magic is. Um, magic, you hold in your hand. There's like some cool, you know, like how in D&D &D you have to hold charge attacks. That's, that's kind of how magic in general works in the system. So You can also put it into wands and staves, and I imagine weapons too, but that probably takes some training to get right. All right. Abracadabra, abracazoo, you take out your bow, and now you shoot. To be specific, yep. you take your success to ready your weapon. Then you take an action to reload it, put the arrow in. And then, you fire. There are some really fun combo build, combo actions that like, you really use your bow well. I think they're the sharpshooter somewhere. Two and two. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll see how he rolls, because that's technically what you're up against. <coughs> I somehow beat him. Mm -hmm. Well, since he is unfortunately like not ready for a combat at all, uh, the poor, the poor guy... You do actually hit him, because he cannot retreat. <laughs> He's not ready, he can't retreat, so you win on a tie, which actually gives you two successes. So what does your bow do? What's what's the damage on your bow? The effect of okay, the bow. My bow. So I got a composite bow, is like my one good item. Uh, damage two, uh, damage plus two on crits is what it so, says. So damage two means that the base damage is two. Usually you add two extra per success. Critical means that for two successes you get three instead of two. So you do five damage that he has to soak. Which is a pretty bonkers, actually. Poor guy. This is this is gonna hurt because five damage can kill someone if they fail the roll. Um, all right, he's severely injured, and his morale is broken. As you hit him in the leg, right in between the little little nooks of his armor, the resulting injury forces him down onto his knees. So, in case you're wondering how damage works, it's an instance. It's kind of like a Magic the Gathering, except imagine if every set number something happens. One damage means you're hurt. Future hits do one more damage. If you're hit for two damage, you're afraid. Your morale is broken, you can't make attacks. You can still counterattack, but you can't fight. Basically, if everyone gets hit for two at once, your fights usually end, because there needs to be combat-capable combatants. Three is injured. Way harder to get rid of than hurt. Also adds one damage. Then there's dying, killed, and overkilled. Overkilled makes yeah, it overkilled terrifying. is funny. Overkilled <laughs> is hilarious, and I think it's something that, that more people should be willing to put into their game. The idea that you just explode someone and everyone nearby is like, I remember fuck. my game with Como when we did the overkill on that one guy with like a fucking rock. Too bad there was no one to <laughs> see was... it because they would have shat set their pants, basically. There's that one, that one NPC. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine like you're walking down the street in the middle of the night and some dude just gets brained with a rock? And not like Lily Rain, which just like explodes. Anyway, the point is this guy gets hit in the leg with an arrow. He's sent reeling by the impact. I think he was already reeling, so he's knocked down to the ground. As I said, he kind of kneeling over. The 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 final guy in the back. I mean, he can't interrupt. I just forgot conversations on Otfrey. All right, that's your whole turn. You you messed the man up. Who wants to go next? I just can we go back to the funny cloud? Oh my god! <laughs> well, no one's dead yet. Uh, this worry. one's playing too much with Sons of the Forest. <laughs> well, no one's dead yet. Don't uh, worry about it. Would Would it be reasonable to run up and try to first aid the guy who was shot? I mean, no. it's a busy broom, but yes. Yeah, we have a third guy though. Yeah, hit him with a mace and then think about first aid. Uh, Aliana's a pacifist. She prefers not to. Yeah, Close your eyes and scream while swinging it. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck, Larry? Shoulder my way in front of people and, like, kind of take up a lot of the room and go, all right, we've made our presence known. How about we de-escalate and you tell us what we want to know and we want to finish you off. Have more soup. Have yeah, more uh, soup. Uh, uh, Oliana right. runs up to first aid, the, the guy who was, who was shot. We can help. 
can I get from you? Will presence. As you try and make it definitely clear that this ain't gonna go his way. You also get a bonus D8 because uh, two guys are already messed up. Make it a bonus D12, actually. That's a very advantageous situation. D12. You might say it's perfectly reasonable, but that's why you have so many dice. Oh, that's a hell of... <laughs> five, four, five. Um, just as, as the last one grabs for his blade, the hand stops and realizes that whatever whatever is coming next for him probably ain't going to be much better. I mean, you... you it's a hell of a blow, you know. Yeah. <sighs> the situation immediately de-escalates. In a sense, there's still the hanging tension in the air. The, the the last guy who isn't screaming in agony. Um, but first, I think, Fritters, what do you do? Like you were juggling. What happened with that <laughs> when this started happening? Oh, I mean, like if they if they came at us and I had my chance, I was gonna like switch from juggling to throwing the the rocks I was juggling at them. So you're still juggling. Yeah, I mean, now, now I'm still a harmless clown. Don't worry about how fast I am. You're slow. The clown was too I slow. You say I haven't taken out two people. <laughs> oh, hiya, papaya. Zappy. <laughs> Zappy. All right. All right. He gives you the answer you're looking for. Telling you with a quivering voice and the sweat on his brow that they're downstairs down in the caves. Boss is looking for something and he needs the bird for it. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? I mean, he doesn't recommend you go down there. For one, the boss is down there with like five other, no, six other people actually. And on top of that, there's unpleasant things down there. Critters and fritters. <gasps> Fritters? We have a fritter. Activated. <laughs> to, like, turn around. To, like, where Fritters <coughs> is standing. Fritters is being eaten by a spider. <laughs> it's your first dungeon. There's always a giant spider in those. That's the rules. You gotta have a that goblin. You gotta have a kobold. You gotta have a big spider. And you gotta have a monster that your GM should have really not put in there. And a big old <clears throat> rat. And, of course, a big old rat. <laughs> like, there's all those monsters, but you were only hired to get rid of the rat. Well, yeah, we gotta get the tail for some guy's soup. God fucking damn it! I love, I love the idea of like you go into a dungeon. You're just there for one fucking rat, but there's like a whole army in between you and it. At that point, you know the party just adopts the rat out of spite for the guy. Yeah. All right, you have your answers. The guy. Uh, <coughs> well, wait. First, we have good old or good friend lady who's trying to help out. Um, let's see. You have first aid, so you get a bonus to d12. Secondly, it's academics and mind to see if you can quickly and effectively treat this individual. Oh, you also add your career because, uh, midwife. So your total roll is 2d6, d8, d12. <laughs> You're helping him, but also rubbing his belly for some reason. Like, You're gonna have a nice, healthy baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're helping them, but you're making them really uncomfortable. I'm sorry, the, the, the face you're making just reminds me of the last time I saw a lady give birth. <coughs> 36. You can you can use the dice tray to add them all together, by the way. You don't have to make it separate rolls. Uh -huh. isn't, okay. isn't that just cool? It's awesome. It is. Also, if you uh, right-click, you remove a die. D8, D12. No, that's a D6. The fact this yeah, I do just, like that. That is very slick. The fact that this isn't built into Foundry baffles me, given what an incredible quality of life feature it is. Yeah, and like it's always been there when we joined the first time in this this new game and it wasn't there, I was like, it feels naked. It doesn't feel right. That's right. double successes. That's a that's two successes, which means that you basically get a crit. You get an overwhelming success. You do a really good job at it. Give yourself a little pat pat. Okay. Okay. You you're gonna be okay. I want my arrow back. Breathe slowly. Focus on <laughs> your hips. Yeah, I I I, I lead him through the Lamaze breathing as I as I help him out. <laughs> yeah, and again, 
Kobe's standing next to you. I want my arrow back. I mean, you you can get your own arrow back. I'm I'm I'm. I'm... You're not delivering a baby. I want the arrow. <laughs> the arrow is God. the baby. <laughs> <clears throat> that arrow is my baby. I don't know you how have, to remove you, an arrow. You got a healthy bodkin arrow. How, how proud are you? <laughs> I'm not even sure why I fired a bodkin at him. I usually have broadheads. Anyway, the situation is mostly resolved, although the three of them feel significantly humbled by the experience. Okay, and, and since, you know, you're feeling better, you're not going to tell people downstairs I mean, that we're looking for someone. Unless you plan to leave, you're probably going ahead of them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they're going anyway. Also, I'm trying the soup. <laughs> you, you, you try the, 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 the half soup that remains inside the bowl. The, the pot. I mean, it tastes I, about... I... Tell me. Could definitely use some meat, or like some really proper tasty vegetables. It's mostly just roots and assorted forageables, so it only tastes mm. a bit earthy and sour. Let's get a look at onion, salt. Duh. I like that you accuse them of things that they may not have available to them. Very nice of you. Onions all over the place. I live well, in these forests. Well, what would you like to do next? You've resolved a situation. That's a term for what I did. We'll, we'll write it down as that, yes. Okay, let's get moving. I had fun. <laughs> yeah, I had fun. <laughs> well, I'm glad that our first proper encounter was an absolute mess. <laughs> Those are the best ones, though. You're now realizing that when uh, Cove said people who live out in the forest are not friendly, he was also referring to himself. Unfortunately, if you want to get anything more out of these guys, they tell you that they haven't been down there. Partially because they got freaked out when they saw what was down there. What'd you see? Uh, th the way they describe it, like it takes a moment for you to realize what they're trying to say. They, they describe it as like imagine like a, a, a so some grapes, but you make them like really big, and they got like all these eyes on them, or, or, or like things that might be eyes, and it's got like these big old tendrils, big old lumps at the end, and it kind of just moves like a person, but sometimes it swings like a monkey, and other times it's kind of like a spider. So, uh, and like what it does is it grabs right. things and it and it just reels it in like a fisherman. I have played way so, too much in the forest lately. Arcturus is dead, right? We, 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 we can just go back and you know, just just like, you know, cut cut paralysis. Because that, that sounds like something that I kill Arcturus. I love Arturius, this right? ferret. Is that shark bait? <laughs> yeah, it's shark bait. Holy shit. I love yeah. shark bait. <laughs> I love that her tooth is going in first. Cove is going to put a hand on the midwife's shoulder and point out a fact. Things with eyes are really easy to shoot with arrows because they have a lot of eyes. Point It'll is, this guy got... When did they see your air arrows coming? <laughs> Doesn't help them much. Deep sea animal. <laughs> You have Let's a few keep ways going. You, we you got have, a job. You have a few ways you can go in this room. You can go west, where there seems to be a small stair going down, or go south into that other room that connects to the T section where you entered. We should probably go check that other section. But I don't want to leave these guys entirely alone in front of us. What are they going to do? Be fine. <clears throat> well, let's go check that other section real quick. Taking a look that it's in a book. This is a, a obviously some sort of storage area, judging by all the old barrels and crates that are around the place. Barrel. It also smells rather moldy. It's kind of wet down here. Like everything has a very wet sheen in some places, which makes sense given you know it rains a lot here, so obviously humidity would get trapped in a cold place like this. By the way, where did you hit the guy with the scalding water? Like, cross chest in the face. Yeah, gotcha. He'll be fine. It's only sure. 30 burns. Those heal eventually, right? I'm the only, I need a cleric for that one. Like I, I, I'm pretty sure I, I know that I can't help with that. 
Besides the uh, items in the room, there's an exit to the north where you just came from, one to the east, which goes up to the stairs you used to get in here, and one going off to the west, which goes into a sort of double room that connects to the... Basically, you're in like a small square of four rooms. You could also take a look around at some of the items around here. I think that'd be a good idea. Could be something useful. I mean, most of the stuff has already been I'm either not... looted or rusted, but hey. Would you I'm like just to gonna keep like an eye on the guy. Would whoever thinks they are the best searcher of them all roll me a d12? Actually, yeah, just roll me a d12. <laughs> Oh, say, I actually have 2d6 in searching. I'll give it a go. Oh, what's my searching? You mostly order? find, of course, like rotted foodstuffs. Oh, nope. And all the stuff. Maybe this, 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 I just I just asked you for a d12. The other ones are mostly rotted. Oh, okay. Well, I got a 10 on the 12. Among all these, <clears throat> these, these finely made... Barrels are such nice storage media. I'm going to start gushing about barrels if I don't stop myself. So instead, I'm going to tell you about the little box you find. Within which are a few spare scraps of cloth, some threading for it too, in case you need to make some patch jobs. But the more interesting item is a silver hand cloth, uh, hand mirror wrapped up in some rags to keep it fresh. That's gonna probably be helpful. I'm taking that. You're probably slightly surprised to like pull away the cloth and see your own face. Uh, witchcraft. Wait, I'm witchcraft. <laughs> witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Trying to take my soul. Different witchcraft. I say, Mine is fine. Have you? I've just committed multiple forms of magic like five seconds ago. <laughs> Thanks, Claire. So mirrors are useful when you're exploring uh, lots of things. It's also quite pretty. I've probably used one. The uh, outside frame and handle are molded to look like uh, intertwining braiding vines of sorts. That's cool. That is rather nice. I'll give Arrow it. As you do this, you hear the guys grumbling in the room behind you. Grumble, grumble. Grumble. Make sure they don't go ahead of us, because... At the end, at the west end of this double door, you get a sort of similar... Like, there's two doors that are leaving in... The, you, you can walk in a straight line from the staircases you went for down to the other side. And there it splits up left and right. Both go downwards. One has the sound of dripping water. From the other, you can hear the earth almost groan in the distance. Where would you like to go? What do you think, buff lady? I mean, groaning is almost never a good thing. I can only move so many rocks. I can, well, I can move time, some rocks. How's, how's the group feel about swimming? <clears throat> I don't know about no flow. swimming. I think the dripping one's probably safer. Well, let's try that one, I guess. Yep, and let's uh, watch your step, though. These rocks get slippery. So you're going down the wet side? Yep. The wet side does surprisingly end in a large room. You shine the lantern around, and notice that this room has probably not been finished yet, as the floor is highly irregular, causing the water to pool in several places. Even the ceiling isn't smoothed out yet. In some places, just... Water droplets drip down. There's enough water that you can't really see too well. It's not murky. It's clear and settled. After all, it doesn't really move all that much. Although, I've watched enough cave diving videos to know, like, don't don't fuck with the silt, man. Don't fuck with the silt. Oh, yeah, no, that stuff will fuck you up. Like, you might be like, well, what's a little dust going to do? It's like, you're floating. You cannot tell up from down. You will get turned around, and you will, like an absolute clown, make a fool of yourself. And, and or die. die. The amount of people that get killed by smokescreen is just like, wow. Well, and how long it takes this stuff to settle down again is like measured in hours. Holy crap. I don't know why I started watching the videos on like people getting in, stuck in caves and stuff. But on the other hand. Oh my god, I've watched a few and they're so claustrophobic. Like secondhand claustrophobia. I run d and I need to know what it's like to be in a tight tunnel, slowly <laughs> suffocating on your own breath. Oh, yeah, no, like you see the people like crawling that. through those like tiny little crevices. Like, nope. Anyway, this room appears to be empty, other than the puddles of water. <laughs> Although that's just hmm. a surface glance. Oh, well, Buff Lady, uh, you got the lantern. I'll cover you. All right, you're the boss. 
I'm not used to hearing that. You the boss. I'm also not used to hearing people talk to me. That's kind of weird still. So what do you do, Harriet? Apparently, you're ordered to do something within this chamber. I mean, I guess slowly move forward through the chamber. This large room, which is about 7 by 7 meters, it's quite sizable. It might be intended as a barrack at some point, you know, when people are still here, given the... Yes, I eventually rejoin with you guys. You see some rusty-looking tools, which are, like, just actively decaying and melting into the water. As you stand within this... Do you have the light source, or did Cove take it? I thought... I, she's got the light source, and I've got arrows trained on her. You start to notice that what appeared to be a rock in the corner of the room is actually like a skeleton that has started to like, you know, some sediment has formed on top of it, so it doesn't look quite like a skeleton anymore. It's huddled up and holding on to something in its hands, or at least it's got its hands clenching little fists. I mean, I'm not touching the skeleton. I'm Telling not. The dead is probably a bad thing. Even if it is, you know. Not. Oh, I guess I'll be the one to go in. I'll, uh. Splish, splish, splish. Use my arrow to, like, poke the thing it's holding and make sure it doesn't react. Uh, it's about as solid as a rock. Which is to say, it doesn't really move too much when you poke it. It's not, oh, it's not stuck to the ground, though, but to just, like, wiggle. But... Well, I'm going to try to quickly grab it out of the hands. I'm not going to do the goddamn Doctor Strange thing, like slowly reach for it. I'm going to try to grab it in case something happens. I don't Listen, trust anything. If you're in a Fatal Frame game, you have to slowly reach towards an object so that a jump scare can come out. Yeah, I have, to, I have to like carefully reach forward so I can get grabbed. While you're doing it, you have to make an unusual amount of grunts and groans. Well, you have to be like, uh, okay, I, I, I can get this. It's not moving. I have no reason to think it's going to move. Go slow now. All right. <laughs> so you're grabbing the... You're, you're wrenching the hands open. Yep. The skeleton can't be that old since there's not that much sediment, but it's enough to throw you off. With a little crack, you break the weak rock connections. The bones are fine. The bones are what you should worry about. You manage to wrench from its hand a green metal die, like a dice, and uh, a glass tube of some sorts. To be specific, this green metal die has six faces. One smiles, one scowls, one shivers, one cries, one laughs, one dreams. Each face fills you with emotion. The uh, fancy glass tube, on the other hand, contains a smaller glass tube and a dial at the top. Even if you could read, the, the, the dial doesn't have any numbers or indicators, so you're kind of just figuring it out. The old tube and die. The six-sided uh, square thing makes me think that it's going to be used for games for nerds. No, it has faces on it, not numbers. It's not nerdy. Oh, it's a party game for, like, 35-year-old men trying to have fun. Got it. Yeah, the other dice has, like, lit or kick yes, or don't, touch. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> we have to find that one to make the set. <laughs> anyway. I have no idea what these are. Sure don't. Just I'm gonna hold on to these for now. Give me a moment. I need to, I need to make a nice shorthand of this stuff. Um. Oh, you're the only one who has this. <laughs> Can you roll me mind supernatural? Yeah, I got points in that because I'm magic. Okay, so mind I think is I think the... I think there's something cute about the fact that like everyone has the ability to just learn magic sense, but it makes sense because you're animals, and animals always respond to magic in funny ways. Everyone's always like uh, two and six. Everyone's always like humans are great, but humans don't have any magic sense. Humans don't pick up on ghosts as easily as your dog does. Yeah, cats when they stare off into the corner, that's because they're looking at ghosts. I mean, they're mostly just hoping the ghost gives them pat pats. But hey, well, the cat's like, "There's a ghost in my place, and it's not patting me. Get the fuck out." You can tell that both of these items are enhanced with some sort of magical energy, but you're not quite sure what they do specifically. I'll try to figure them out when we have a, a better time. Excellent. I will tell you that they are called the Wacky Die. And the other one, I'm not going to tell you because the name spoils the function. As soon as I say Wacky Die, Claire's character, Wacky? <laughs> Hijinks! 
shenanigans. shenanigans. As you step through the water, how how do you do that? Do you do, you do it like most people do, where they, they 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 try to wade through it like big stumps? So he says like pooling, right? Yeah, it, it's it's not like knee height, but it is enough that water splashes everywhere every step. So are like any uh, ridges between it, or is it like covering the whole place? I mean, between you and the exit, you'll probably have to touch the water once. You know, the awkward feeling as you're walking through the... through a... God, for like two steps where I go into it. Yeah. Uh, I probably move slowly without the big stomps because I have a bow. And I don't want the bow string to get wet if anyway, I can help it. Your examination reveals that there's nothing in this chamber that leads anywhere, at least. Well, I guess we're going to the groaning one. Great. <laughs> a lot of you go back up. And then go back down. The stairs are like a, you know, are like a ziggurat. In the process of doing so, the glass tube you're carrying starts emitting light as you, like, jostle your way up the stairs. That could be good or bad. Wait, what starts emitting the light? The glass tube. The, the glass Ooh. tube. When you start walking up the stairs, you know? Step, step. You try to look at it and see if I can figure out what it's doing. It's glowing. Just like it is emitting diffuse, light. Just like diffuse glow like a gold. The thing. inner the inner the inner tube is like emitting light. I wish I knew what you did. <laughs> Fine then, keep your secrets. Well, I'll keep an eye on it as we go down more. And don't forget it has a dial. It, it emits gamma rays. Oh great, I'm a Hulk. Okay, let's see. I'm going to cautiously play with the dial a little bit. You start to twist the dial. The color it emits changes as you do this. One of the settings causes it to go from the normal spectrum straight to purple, and it lights up the die that you're holding. Now I'm going to investigate oh, the die out of curiosity, because this is weird. Oh god, it's covered in like white spots, and this is a black light. It's not a black light. The cum die. Actually, the glass tube would also illuminate itself by doing this, but. Hey, clown. Cove does not know any of your names, by the way. He's too busy in nature. Fritter, someone is asking you a question. What do you do? Hello? Claire? Hello. Uh, repeat, repeat, repeat the question. To I Brandon. didn't say anything. I was like, hey, clown, and you ignored me. That's not a question. But yes. I'm going to hold out the glowy, glowy cube. Roll this on the ground and see if it does anything. No problem. Okay. There's... God, we have a clown. All right, Claire. Can you roll me a <clears throat> throwing attack with a bonus d12? <laughs> fucking kills me. <laughs> Don't worry, this ain't gonna kill you. It's a, it's a little just like, what are you worried about. Oh, just where, where, where's, my head. where's throwing attack? Like how I um I think throwing is pretty much always your throwing skill plus body and speed. So in your case, it's a D six and a D ten. Okay. And a bonus D twelve. Oh shoot. Okay, so D six, D ten, D twelve. Oh, wait, excuse me. You do not roll inside um, of Roll me a d6, actually. Just a d6. Oh, okay. Well. The die clatters on the ground, but which face shows upwards? The, the face is a sad face. It's the crying face. And suddenly, Cove, you feel overwhelmed with a sensation of sadness and depression. Wait, why me? Well, because Fritter is standing directly in front of you when it took the die, and they rolled it at you. <laughs> You're the most obvious target for this. My plan backfired. Now which is why you're sad. About it. <laughs> exactly. I'm sad that my plan backfired too. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, cool. This wacky die appears to fill people with emotions of whatever side ends up on top. You can only guess what the other sides specifically do. I'm going to roll it once more just to see if I can get rid of being sad, because being sad is gay. I mean, your sadness will fade over time, but you roll it, presumably at Fitter, who's still standing in front of you. So, roll me a d6. 
We're going to kill each other with this thing, aren't we? Fritter is overcome with an extensive desire to laugh. The guys who are sitting there Nothing the changes. are probably <laughs> very confused at what's going on down there. <laughs> Nothing has changed. I think it dies just broken. Uh, I, think it, I think it's broken. I'm putting it back in my bag. Let's keep uh, going. I'm going to turn the uh, glowy, glowy tube. Can I turn it red? Yes. I can turn it red. I would red. Like to point out that it's doesn't not a, fuck up my vision. I would like to point out that it's not an especially bright light. It's uh, about as strong as a candle. Lights up things in near distance, like two meters, and then fair up to... No. No, 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 no. I got this all wrong. What is near again? Oh, I got this the other way around. Whoop! Oh, no, no, no. I'm just reading this wrong because I'm stupid. It lights things up a little bit, like like decently up to two meters, and four meters, it's uh, it's dim light. Which in D&D &D terms is like five to six feet of yeah. good light, and then 10, 12 mm -hmm. to 15 of like poor but hey, it's uh, if it's red, it still doesn't mess up my night vision. It's very easy on the eyes, yes. Let's get moving, friends, or whatever you all are. Also, the glass tube isn't scratched from being pulled along a, a, a calcified corpse, so it's probably pretty stuff, strong stuff. You make your way over to the groaning earth room. Here, a chamber like has been this. slowly constructed. To be specific, it looks like they were trying to build some sort of chapel, judging by the dais on one side. And the effort made to make several small alcoves. Behind the central dais, however, where efforts were made to presumably carve some sort of, you know, everyone always likes to put a bas relief behind there, instead opens up into a gaping maw that is not made of smooth stone, but natural rock formations. Hanging stalagmites and more. Hope you're ready for a squeeze. And we'll leave it here for now. As up ahead, you hear the unpleasant sounds of whatever lurks below. I'm going to kill it. I don't have any soup. I'll kill it. Soup-based weaponry. <laughs> like, imagine that. I carry, like, those self-heating cans of food that they used to sell. Like, you stab the little thing into it and it's starting to hot. It's like, the enemies are coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, so one sec, I gotta get my Christmas dinner in a tin. And then, like, five minutes later, I throw the tin at it. They're like, what the hell is this? Is this a almost acceptable blend of pseudo food and then the pseudo food launches out into their faces is this is this like the like the pack of noodles in, in undertale when we're gonna spend five minutes waiting for you to heat up your ramen Hell it yeah, heats man. itself up all right <laughs> let's get to the debriefing because we're not done with you yet right you get one experience point just for being a cool guy and being around yay i love being cool i like being around I appreciate that you're tolerating me in my, my, my rusty, rusty moments. They all haven't played in a while. You also get one point. Don't know what you just did there, Zyla, but that's not turning a number into one. The next thing... All I did was highlight it, so I can change You've it. also completed, effectively, a chapter. The first floor of the dungeon and entering it, so that counts as another point. So, that puts you at two. Oh. Mm. I thought I got three. Up next, let's go through everyone's mottos. <clears throat> Cove, your motto is fight for need and not for sport. Do you think you have lived up to your motto this session? Yeah, we needed to do something and we tried to not kill them. Fair enough. Make that three experience in your pocket. Yeah. Harriet, bonds between country folk are stronger than steel. Do you feel you've lived up to that? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if we had a huge amount of teamwork. I don't know, hard to judge. You know what, you can give the point. We're, we're not exactly at a point where a motto like that can really express itself too strongly, but we'll get there. Okay. Just take it. Mm, running is healthy from Aliana. Do you feel that you've uh, lived up to your goal as a <laughs> marathon runner? I mean, Aliana has... Noted multiple times that you know they they should probably just go, but you know has not gone, so probably not. Cause cause it's a, it's a double meaning. One, be healthy. Two, I mean you you don't have to stay in a dangerous situation. So Fair I think enough. no. Freders, have you lived up to your motto? Peace to all good people. 
thanks to that for a second. What 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 happened? What happened in the la- la- last? You didn't hour. hurt anybody. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. The sun is shining in my yeah. You know, honestly, yeah. I made people laugh, and everyone was happy. I did all and, the hurting, and nothing, and and then nothing happened after that. We actually made friends with those people, and we shared soup with them. We did, in fact, share soup with them. That is a thing that technically happened. <laughs> Marvelous. <clears throat> FYI, the flashback, everything's colorful, and they're not even in, in a cave. Be. Everyone also gets one more point, because I think y'all have done something nice. <clears throat> yeah. Goes without saying what Zyla's been up to. But, Harriet, defuse the situation. I rather like that Aliana was so concerned about the person getting injured. And mm. Fritters... Your improvisational skills have certainly avoided something. I don't know what. <laughs> Who can say? All right. Let's look at everyone's goals. You know what? How about we do the goals next time? I'm a little... I'm going to... Figure out for yourself. Well, actually, we'll, we'll resolve that. We'll just resolve it later. I'm not in the best mind space right now because I need to shake all the rust off and become a person again. A GM. Get the rust off me. I haven't found anything yet in the forest. We're going to get there later, though. Yeah. I have to give you goals, too. So I'll I'll tell you about your goal when we get there, which will probably just be getting this guy out of here. Good boy. Uh Go to bed, Claire. Go to bed. Oh, yeah. Go to bed. (laughs) Go to bed. No, good night. Bingo. Bingo. No, he's in the other room. No. Good boy. He is. He's over there. 